discord with our neighbors, be they at home or at work, is because, well, we don't bother to know them. It's Saturday morning at the Massey house, and Christine Massey is trying to write a magazine article. Abu Ben Adam may his tribe increase. Awoke one night from a deep dream of peace. Mom, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Abu Ben Adam may his tribe increase. Can you understand every word I'm enunciating? Uh, every word, dear. Uh huh. Hey, how's it going, Mom? Huh? How's it going? Uh. Will you please come with me? Yes, but, uh, Mr. Teasdale, I, I already know what happened. And, of course, I'm willing to pay for the glass. Mrs. Massey. Yes. I believe you would consider me a good neighbor. Oh, a very good one. Yes, indeed. We don't have children. No, I know. We don't have pets. No. We don't have TV or hi-fi. Mrs. Massey. Yes. Have you ever heard of an Abyssinian tiger tulip? Oh, no. It is the rarest tulip genius in the world today. It takes two years and three months to mature and bloom. Oh. Well, this morning, I saw two years and three months of meticulous loving care and patience bloom into a magnificent specimen. Oh, don't tell me that bulb landed right on your Abyssinian tulip. No. She ate it. Priya, what on earth did you do a thing like that for? It looked good. Oh. Oh, well, I, I'm awfully sorry. I, I don't know what to say. That... All I want is a little peace and quiet. I... That's all. Just a little peace and quiet. And for you to keep this dog and, and those cannibals out of my house. Now, look here, not cannibals. Oh, no? Well, she eats flowers. Oh, well, she's a little girl. She's only six years old. She can pick the lock on my hothouse door. Well, all right. I, I, I'll just do the best I can to keep my children out of your backyard. How's that? That's what you always say, Mrs. Massey. Yes, well, if you were any kind of a mother, you wouldn't have such brats. They are not brats. I just happen to think that they're a little bit more important than Abyssinian hothouse tulips. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a, a brat, I mean an article to finish. Good day. Well, Matt, huh? Oh, what do you think? Mom, you know, if you'd advance me half of next week's allowance, I'd be able to pay for that broken window. I've got news for you, Paul. You're going to earn that money to pay for that window this time. Mom, she just came in the choir just to be mean. I am not. I told her it ten minutes ago. Well, That's what she said. Now, right now. for one second. But th there's a... Now, I want everybody to go up to your own rooms, and nobody is to say anything to anybody for five whole minutes. Please. Come on, Judy. <clears throat> All right, Vicky, don't be fresh about it. Just go on up and be quiet. I don't know why bees like flowers. They taste awful. You too. Go!
You know, Mr. Teasdale's right. They're noisy, they're impossible, they're inconsiderate. This house gets like a boiler room. Well, why don't you say something? Oh, not me. No. And why not? Well, in your state, if I agree with you, you'll accuse me of criticizing the children. And if I don't, you'll accuse me of starting an argument. Not me. Uh, but, you know, if Mr. Teasdale had any children of his own, he'd understand. I doubt that he'd understand one that eats Abyssinian tiger tulips. Oh, you heard, huh? Windows open. Oh, yeah. How's the article? Oh. That's one of the reasons I asked you to come up early, Paul. Even if I do get it finished by Wednesday, you're not going to like it. Why not? Because there's no good. I don't know anything about a woman's place in government, that's all. Told you that before you started. Oh, you did not. You said you were looking for an article about a woman's place in government. I am. Mm -hmm. And I said I would write it. And then you said, and I'm quoting now, with your inexhaustible intuition, you probably will, unquote. Oh, no. I said inextinguishable intuition. There's quite a difference. Oh. <laughs> it, it sounded like a compliment at the time. Why don't you write an article about something that you know about? For instance, what do I know about? Mr. Teasdale and his Abyssinian tiger to it. Ah, that Mr. Teasdale and his little peace and quiet. Doesn't he know this the very nature of children? They have That's to have... That's a good title. What is? Mr. Teasdale and his little peace and quiet. Oh. Chris? Yeah. Did you ever think how much better you'd write with a little peace and quiet? <laughs> it's crossed my mind, yes. Well, I tell you what you do. You meet me at the office on Monday, and I'll have a little surprise for you. Surprise? Oh, I love surprises. What is it, huh? Well, it's a surprise. Oh, come on, tell no, me. No, Monday, it's a surprise. Now, oh. get back to your typewriter, Mr. Teasdale. Mm. You mean? Mm. Well, there it is. It's all yours for as long as you want it. Oh, it is lovely. No windows. Nothing to distract you. Oh, oh, yes. It's soundproof and air-conditioned, of course. Huh? Oh, naturally. It used to be Beebe's office, place oh. to hang his hat when he came in. I see. But oh. since he's decided to function as publisher, he's taken over the boardroom. Oh. We had this done over for visiting fashion editors. Oh, well, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at this, for heaven's sake. Oh, an electric typewriter. Sure. Oh. Uh, what's that? Oh, electric pencil sharpener. No. Mr. Belzer, Mr. Beebe's looking for you. That? Here to come. Oh. I'll be right there. Well, how much automation can you get, huh? I don't mind telling you I had a selfish motive when I arranged all this. Oh, you did? And what was that? Well, Beebe's been making life pretty rough, and having you close by will help soften the blow. I don't think he'd approve of your fraternizing with help. I suppose not. Mm -mm. Better get back to work, huh? Mm -hmm. We'll have lunch. All right. Oh, Paul, listen, uh, before you go, I, I want you to listen to this. Uh, how's this for a beginning of that article? I just started it. Now, it's a small world, and every day it's getting smaller. We can get where we are going far faster than ever before, and when we get there, there's no place to park. As the world shrinks, our elbows begin to touch, and we don't like that. For all of us are really looking for a little peace and quiet. I'll buy it. Good. I don't know about Beebe, though. He marched into my office on Friday afternoon and said, uh, remember, the average intelligence of the American housewife is of a 14-year-old adolescent, and don't you forget it. Oh, that's an awful thing to say. Belzer, are you in here? Yeah, now you'll see what I'm up against. Yes, Bascom, I'm helping Mrs. Massey get settled. Did you approve this layout on the Peace Corps? I did. Well, I just canceled it. It stinks. Who do you think is interested in anything that's going on in Pakistan? Come in here, I want to talk to you. Well, there goes lunch. Work hard. Paul? And don't you forget it. Can't he hear everything that's going on? Only if you push the button. Oh!
boy. Hey, Doc. Put those Hi, books where they belong. How you doing? Okay. That's mm. raw batter. You too, sir. Good, though. Hey, Mom? She's not home yet. Get away from there. Where is she? At her office, working. Why does she have to have an office? Yeah, what's so great about an office? Well, she can't work in this madhouse. You kids are enough to drive anybody, Betty. Mm, you mean she goes all the way into the city just to have a place to work? Well, that's one of the reasons. What, you mean we drove her out of the house? You drive termites out of the wall. That potato salad's for dinner. You know, we better have a meeting. Yeah, we better. Hey, Judy. Here you come? Hi. Oh, hi. That bad? Worse. Well, let me hear it. You heard it yesterday. I haven't come up with one more line, Paul. Not a line. Well, you had a pretty good start. Oh, I thought I did, but... I don't know, in two days, not a line. Oh, I wrote some stuff about uh, how we all need a little privacy, and as the world gets faster, we all need a little peace and quiet. But, uh, Vicky could have done better. It was awful, just awful. You want to know something? What? I could use a little peace and quiet. I bet you could. Oh. Speaking of peace, what happened to Peace Corps article? It's dead. No. I'm sorry. Hello? Oh, yes, yes, Ellen. A wall. Oh, well, where? Oh, well, he wouldn't do a thing like that. He... Ellen, he wouldn't dare. Oh. Yes, all right. Yes, thanks, Ellen. You're white. What's up? Mr. Teasdale is building a wall, a very high wall, between our properties. Well, he looked like the wall building type. But no, no, he's not really, Paul. I mean, well, we've lived next door to the Teasdales for 14 years. We've never had any trouble. I mean, real trouble. As a matter of fact, we hardly know each other. They're a very nice, quiet couple. They keep to themselves, and, and, and we kept to ourselves, except when the kids, well, you know how kids are. Thank you. A wall. Oh, you just wait till I give that old fool a piece of my mind. I want to go home, Paul. Is it all right? It's a good idea. Fine. Uh, I'll drive you up. I've had this magazine today, too. Oh, well, good. Thanks. The wall is on my property. You have nothing to say about it. But we have to look at it. Well, then look. Maybe it'll remind you and that army of yours that there are other people in this world. Look, if, if nobody has a wall between their properties in Ellendale. It's just ridiculous. They don't have it. Well, nobody in Ellendale has a three-ring circus living next door, either. Except me. Well, if you don't like it, why don't you move? Well, why don't you move? I was here first. Why don't you move to the mountains where those monkeys of yours can hang by their tails from the Now, trees? what do you know about children? All you've got is a bunch of Abyssinian tiger tulips that can't even cry or laugh or play or run or anything. Chris, that's hitting below the belt. Well, it's true. I don't uh, care. It doesn't do any good to stand here and scream at each other oh. across the wall. Now, Mr. Teasdale, why don't you go in the house and think it over? Mrs. Massey will do the same. All oh, I want is a little peace and quiet. And if I have to build a wall 50 feet high to get it, I'll build it. That's all. Just a little peace and quiet. And if you think you can bring some big tough-looking guy up here to frighten me, well, I'm not so easily frightened. He's not even your husband. And that's hitting below the belt, Mr. Teasdale. Oh! How the hell? Teasdale, get out of that. Have you ever had the feeling that you did everything wrong, you acted wrong, you said the wrong things, and that you were right? Every day. Paul, you, you cannot love, I mean, really love an Abyssinian tiger tulip. You just can't. I don't know. If you haven't anything else, maybe you can. Well, I love that magazine. I gave birth to it with all the trauma and pain my body could stand. Until I met you, I didn't think of anything else. Until I met you, I didn't know that people counted. I thought they were just instruments through which I could arrive at a printed page. When I looked at that first edition off the press, I, I held it in my hands like a chalice. I drank from it, caressed it. I excused every cruel word I ever used against every flunky along the way because the end product was, was exciting, colorful. 
Well, it was a masterpiece of editorial splendor. <laughs> it didn't sell. But I said it was too good for the common market. Now, Chris, you taught me that the common market is you and me and Binky and Vicky, Peter, Paul. Well, if I've left out any, I'm not prejudiced. I just can't remember their name. And Mr. Teasdale, he's the common market. Now, somewhere between you and Mr. Teasdale, you're going to have to prove to me that, that you're right and B.B.'s wrong. Very, very smart man, Paul. You're wise and you're, you're smart. And you are so easy to love. So easy. You know, I had a dream the other night. You did? Oh, it was delicious. What about? Well, there was a line of people like Radio City at Christmas, mm -hmm. all waiting to tell you that they loved you. But I was at the head of the line. You know what I did? I just stood there and said it over and over again. Oh, the crowd shouted to move, but I didn't care. I just stood there. You know why I stood there? Because I knew that no matter how much the rest loved you, I was the only one in the whole mad lot that loved you. Like I love you. But I'm awake now, and I still think so. It's a good world, isn't it? It's a fine world. Why can't it always be like this? Who doesn't think? Mm. Mr. Teasdale. Mr. Baby. Uh -huh. I'm not worried about Mr. Teasdale. And I'm not worried about Mr. Baby. Love conquers all. If you let it. Well, I'm willing. Chris, one of these days. Mm, one of these days. But now, right now, you are going to go to bed. I have to think about my article. Tonight? Tonight. You see, I have a very difficult boss. He's only interested in selling magazines. Come on, up you go. Chris, if you only knew what sleeping in the twins' room with all those pictures, pennants, and pinups does to me. Makes you feel older, huh? Younger. Oh. <laughs> you go to bed right now. Hurry up. Go, go, go. I'm going. Night. He's Dale. We are about to find each other. Well, you should be healthy, wealthy, and wise this morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. I heard you puttering around down here at six. Uh, yes, well, I had some changes I wanted to make so you can take it in with this morning. Huh? Well, want some more coffee? Uh, yeah, in a minute. I, th I, th I think this is all, though. Uh, are the children moving? Oh, already in the kitchen. Oh, you're kidding. I didn't even hear them. Well, this is all set anyway. Well, how'd you sleep? Fine. Good. I'm going to take a nap this afternoon to make up for mine. in that office, it was too quiet. Is there such a thing? Yes, there is. <laughs> There's a difference between noise and sounds of living. And I don't want you to ever lose those sounds of living. Hmm? I don't think well. we could if we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. All right, back to normal. Okay. Milk toast and poke Oh, don't we have practice. Hurry up. How about it? Apple I guess so. All right. right. Yeah. Ella? Okay. Oh, 
Uh, you still have a few minutes, and uh, we're going to pay a visit to Mr. Teasdale. You just go on. I think I'll hit the road, Chris. Oh, no. You're going to come, too. Uh, Mr. Teasdale? Yes? Uh... Mr. Teasdale, I wonder, uh, could I have a word with you, please? Mrs. Massey, I am not up to any more fighting. I didn't sleep a wink last night. Oh, I know, I know. Fighting does that, doesn't it? Uh, but that's why we're not going to fight anymore. You see, uh, we are going to do our very best to help you find your peace and quiet. Well, as a starter, uh, how about dinner at our house tonight? Oh, thank you. Then, then after dinner, we could have a wall-breaking ceremony. Oh, that would be fine. <laughs> Just fine. And maybe someday you'll show us the inside of your hot house, huh? Oh, yes, I'd like that. <laughs> I'd like that. Flowers should be seen. I can get lonesome sometimes. Oh. I'll tell my wife. All right. <laughs> Thank I'll you. see you then. Now, kids, remember, most of the responsibility is on us because there are more of us and we've been given more. Hmm? <laughs> Oh, Sarah, goodbye. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye. Bye, Mom. Right after school. Come home. Nicely done, Mrs. M. Thank you, Mr. B. It was your little speech last night that did it. Well, I wish I thought it would work on B.B. Why don't you give it a try? Hmm, I might just do that. Mama. <laughs> yes, dear. I won't eat any more of Mr. T's sales flowers. That's a good girl. Without asking him. Oh, off you go. Solitude is peaceful, but very often lonely. Well, good night, and we'll see you next week.